I came to talk about something. Uh, I just want to say a few words before we get started, though. I want to say this words right here. Politics. Republican. Democrat. President Biden. News. Parlor. <laughs> Twitter. It's amazing what happens inside of us when I start saying those words, isn't it? It's like, oh, Lord, where is he going? It was funny. I was uh, talking with some students the other day, and the word politics came up, and everybody was like, no, no, right? Um, I actually, I've, tr I've tried to teach this throughout the last few years, but I heard many, many years ago, if you look at what the actual word politics says, um, poly means many. And ticks are bloodsuckers. So many bloodsuckers. It's politics. So uh, anyways, um, look, I'm, I'm kind of starting a little bit humorous, and I'm really not going to preach on politics today. <laughs> Although uh, lots of preachers are doing that these days. Um, that's, not my, that's not my goal in life. That's not my purpose. And so uh, when it comes to preaching the word, uh, I think it's important for us to actually look at the Bible, right? Um, so anyways, that's, I didn't mean to say that, sorry. Uh, but I don't know about you, I can't wait for all of this political stuff to just go away. But I've come to realize it doesn't seem like it's going to anytime soon. So I then began to evaluate just my life and my interaction with things in the political spectrum and just this last season of, of life on, on just the frustration and the discouragement and the different things that I see looking from the outside. And, and it became real apparent to me that there's got to be a better way for us to function through life than to just get lost in all these debates and discussions and arguments and divisions and and all of that different stuff. And I really felt like the Lord illuminated a, a truth to me that I want to share with you today. And that is that if we want to navigate, not just through this season, but through every season of our life, we need the wisdom of God. Okay, because the wisdom of God will help you navigate through anything that comes your way. And so the question then becomes, how do we lean on the wisdom of God? And that's what I want to share with you today. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm going to read from for, uh, verse 6 down through 10, the first part of 10. And I'm reading from the NIV. It says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and God has destined for our glory before time began. Verse 8, None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However... As it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And the beginning of verse 10 says, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. So how do we lean on the wisdom of God? I'm so glad that you asked. Listen, the first thing I want to point out in this scripture is found in verse 6. And it's this simple truth right here. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're leaning on the wisdom of God. If you look at the people that it illuminates in this passage, verse 6, it says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature and not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. So the mature are those who live by the wisdom of God, who see things through God's perspective. And the rulers of this age tend to go with the flow, tend to do what seems right in their own eyes, and it, and it leads to nothing. What's interesting about this book of Corinthians is Paul is specifically dealing with problems in the church. 
I've taught Corinthians and Thessalonians over the, over the last few years, and I, I love the concepts in there because it's so applicable to today. It's like you can read that and you can say, man, I, I can see how this is, same spirit is manifesting in the church today. And so if you look in chapter 1, it's amazing. This, this is awesome right here. Because Paul is rebuking them because they're, they're divisive over who they seem to be following. Wow. Facebook wasn't the original one that invented following. <laughs> okay. But Paul's rebuking them. He's saying, look, it doesn't matter who you follow because it's not about who you follow. It's about Jesus. Right? And he's rebuking them for their, their, their perspectives and, and who they seem to be coming into agreement with. Then what's interesting, if you look even in, in later in chapter 1, he's rebuking them for, for following the customs of the world and the way that they minister and the way that they deal with people, the rhetoric that, that, that was used in that day. He's saying, look, it's not about all of that. Even in chapter 2, as it starts off, he says, look, I didn't come to you with eloquence or superior wisdom, which was how people would typically do talks and, and do sermons in that day. But he says, look, all I came to do was demonstrate the Spirit of God to you. Then in chapter 3, it's so, it's so blunt and so transparent. He says, look, I couldn't even address you guys as spiritual. I had to address you as worldly. Because of the jealousy and the divisions and the backbiting and the hatred and, and, the, and, the, and the animosity that you have towards each other. I'm describing what's going on in our society right now, even in the church. And Paul's saying, I can't even address you as spiritual. You're acting like mere men. You're acting like everybody else. You're not acting like Jesus Christ bought you with the price. You're not acting like he redeemed you. You're not acting like you have the spirit of God living inside of you. Can I be transparent with you just for a moment? Thank you. <laughs> Look, I don't know that I've done the best job navigating through this last season. I've gotten caught up in the discussion, caught up in the debate. I have my opinions, okay? I have my perspective, and I'm right. <laughs> Just like you feel like your perspective is right and your opinion is right, right? I heard, I heard somebody say opinions are like trash cans. Everybody has one and some stink more than others. <laughs> but listen, no matter what's going on all around us, we can, we can find ourselves in that place of wisdom, that place of understanding. It's easy to get caught up in the things of this age, Right? And can I tell you, at some point, you're going to have to decide what side of this spectrum you're going to be on. Are you going to become mature and listen to the wisdom of God? Or are you going to continue living like everyone else in this age and arguing and debating and fighting and trying to prove your point? What's interesting about that verse, verse 6, it says, it's coming to nothing. Right? It's pretty much pointless for us to get in those debates. Because the reality is, no matter how ingrained you get in the conversation or the discussion, there's always going to be another facet. And I've seen it. I, I've fallen into that. As I said, I've gotten involved in, you know, looking at the news and it's like you, you wait for the next story to come out. You wait for the next uh, 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 perspective to come forward so that you can prove more of your point. But the reality is there's always going to be another perspective. There's always going to be another point to make. We're never going to be satisfied in that type of system. But man, can I tell you, it is satisfying when you start to pursue the wisdom of God. Because he'll give you a perspective that trumps everything. There's no pun intended there. So I ask again, how do we lean on the wisdom of God? My second point today is we need to realize the wisdom of God will keep you from making poor choices. Listen to verse 8. It says, none of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Think about the scene here. You have these religious leaders, the religious elite. And they are, are coming against Jesus for his seemingly blasphemous talk against God. Who are you that you say you're the son of God? Nobody can be the son of God. Right? They're attacking Jesus. And then what happens is 
their ignorance to the voice of God inevitably caused them to come against Jesus in such a way that they led him to the cross. They crucified Jesus. Listen to what it says in John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40. It kind of gives us a picture of their mentality. It says, these religious leaders, it says, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me and have life. They were studying the scriptures in a natural way and missing out on the wisdom of God. I must warn you, my friends. I have this this amazing fear that here at Bible College, we can do the same thing. We can study the scriptures every day, all day, from a merely natural perspective, and we can miss Jesus. We can miss the wisdom of God. I appreciate prayer. I appreciate that place of intimacy. It goes beyond the classroom. It goes beyond the chapel service. It goes beyond all the the daily routines. We heard a great message on that Tuesday about making that decision to make the one thing the one thing. The main thing the main thing. But if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves just navigating through this place, not being changed internally because we're not leaning on the wisdom of God. We're looking at things from merely a natural perspective. And so I feel to admonish you in that. Don't let that be said of you, okay? Again, I like being transparent, so I'll share a little bit from my life. I haven't always done the best choice leaning on the wisdom of God, right? I remember when I was newly saved, I was passionate about the Lord, right? I'm still pretty passionate about him, but but when you're newly saved, it's like, it's just different. I can't explain it. It just is so different. You're just like, it doesn't matter what's going on. You just want Jesus, right? It's like, I don't need to eat for the next month. I just want Jesus, right? Now I'm like, what? Fast lunch. (laughs) Anyways, fasting Friday is coming. But listen to what happens, right? I'm, I'm passionately following Jesus, but I wanted a wife, right? I was speaking to the wrong crowd. Sorry. I had some fun with my personal evangelism class discussing some of this the other day. But I wanted a wife, and I had it figured out. I knew who she was, right? She was a girl that I knew before I got saved, and and God was going to save her, and she was going to be my wife, and we were going to do great things together for Jesus. The problem was I was looking at things from merely a natural perspective. I was basing my decision on hair color and personality and how she made me feel inside, not on the wisdom of God. And I thank God that he didn't let me marry that girl. (laughs) I thank God. Oh, man. A buddy of mine who who I was hanging out with at that time, he's like, he asked me just recently, within the last year or two, he's like, aren't you glad you didn't marry her? (laughs) I said, brother, you don't even know. And I thank God for the wife that that the Lord brought me by his wisdom. Because there was things, there were qualities and characteristics in her that I didn't even know I needed in my life. And and I'm glad. And, And I'll tell you this, and I said this to my class the other day, and I'll say it to you. I don't think God will will make it some confusing thing for you to find who your spouse is. I think we make it confusing because we want to look at it in the natural. But if we will simply look to him and say, God, what's your plan for my life? Then I think he'll make it so clear. Because as I said in class the other day and as I said now, as I'll say now, that's like the second most important decision you'll make in your life. Right? Who you pick as a spouse. And listen, you are at a critical place in your life. You're you're in the process right now of making decisions that are going to ultimately affect how you spend the rest of your life. What type of ministry you're going to go into, maybe where you're going to minister, what region, what what geographic place that God's calling you to, maybe who you're going to minister with in that place. And I plead with you, get the wisdom of God in those decisions. 
My dad always said, if you want to experience hell on earth, marry the wrong person. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> Come on. But, but I've seen a few people, right? I have some stories I could share with you. I can't help but think about the writer of Proverbs right now. The book of Proverbs, what a great place to look for wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1, it says wisdom is calling aloud from the streets. Come to me. Come to me. There's a plea from, from not just wisdom, but from the Spirit of God that's saying, please, search me out. Then when you look in Proverbs chapter 4, it says wisdom is supreme. It's above everything. Get wisdom. Do not forsake wisdom. Listen to what it says. Though it costs everything you have, get understanding. Get the mind of God. Get the wisdom of the Lord. I'm telling you, I hope the point is clear today. Get the wisdom of God in every situation, in every circumstance, in every decision that you make. It is essential for you to do it. And why wouldn't you want to? We, we know that God has best things in store for us, right? We, we know, and that really goes right into my next point. Listen, there's only one way to get wisdom. It's given by the Spirit of God. I love the last two verses of this passage that I read, 9 and 10. It says this. I'll read it because I don't want to misquote it. It says this, it says, no eye has seen, nor ear heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. I've heard so many preachers over the years say, oh, we can't even fathom the things that God has for us. Yes, you can. People of old, this scripture is actually talking about, it's, it's some quotes from the different Old Testament places that's saying, look, for years and years and generations and generations, people couldn't actually understand the wisdom of God. They couldn't actually understand it because it was a mystery. It was something that was hidden from them. But now... Right, But now that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he rose from the dead and he gave us his Holy Spirit, we have access to the wisdom of God. And there's no excuse any longer why we can't seek his will and his plan. What I find interesting about this verse is that it says, no eye has seen or ear heard or no, nor entered into the mind. In other words, what he's saying is we can't look at it in the natural we can't say, oh, this see, this looks like a good idea. She looks like a good wife. Oh, I hear this sounds like a good opportunity. This, this makes sense to my mind, sure. No, he's saying we can't understand it that way. I've often found how many times the wisdom of God doesn't make sense. When I think I got it figured out, it's probably not the right way. <laughs> Right? It's good preaching right here, by the way. Can I be transparent one more time? Listen, over the years, I've had plenty of opportunities to do other things. I've had different opportunities to take churches and different things. And there was one in particular I was really considering, really considering. Listen to me. It, it looked like a really good opportunity. What I was hearing sounded good. And I even began to make sense of it in my mind. But thank God for his wisdom. Can I encourage you with something else real quick? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why I ask. It's just polite, I guess. Oftentimes in those situations, the wisdom of God may come through someone else's voice. And I remember in, in a situation, Pastor Dreyer and I sat down on his couch. I said, Pastor Dreyer, I'm, I'm torn. This is what seems to be right. But inside, there's this thing that doesn't seem right. And I'm trying to process because I, I think this is it, but, but I'm questioning it. 
And, and he said, wow, that does seem like a really good idea, really good opportunity. And these words that he said, never forget them. But has God released you from where you're at now? That was the wisdom of God. Because all the time I was looking for this next thing in this elusive, I don't know, ministry opportunity or whatever it was. I mean, we're, we're kind of ingrained to think that way here at Bible college, right? It's like you're going to graduate school and then you're going to go off and do great things for Jesus. I just didn't go off and do them. I just stayed here and did them. <laughs> right? But, and I just, I, I, never, I never had this distinct calling, thou shalt be a Bible college teacher and a, a director of student life, right? I never, I never had that. But what I have had is a desire to live my life based not on what I think, but on what he thinks. And I'm telling you what, it's been the most fulfilling ride. And that moment, when I, when I got that revelation that this was the wisdom of God, it was all the weight that was on my shoulders from that decision that I had to make and I was trying to make in my own understanding, it just dissipated. And I just had such a peace in my heart that this was the will of God for my life. And so I said, you know what, God? Now I'm like, it doesn't matter what position I get, I'm here. He's going to have to make it really clear if he wants me to do something else. And, and I, I submit to you, that's the wisdom of God. Amen? And listen, you have to choose to seek the wisdom of God. And it only comes by the Spirit. I, I had this phrase. It's kind of corny, but I'm going to say it anyways. Listen, you are not going to get his advice if all you do is spend time on your device. It's not, not likely going to happen because, listen, that device is filled with all the other voices and all the other things in the natural realm. But, God, I'm telling you, if you will, if you will take some time this month in February to disconnect just a little bit, just can I, can I, some, maybe that 10-minute prayer time in the morning, don't even bring your phone I know we want to listen to music. We want to do stuff. Listen, I do it all the time. Guilty. I, I'm like washing the dishes and I'm like putting something on YouTube in my ear so I can listen to it while I'm doing the dishes. While I'm doing some menial tasks. While I'm taking stuff to the attic. Which is a trek. Anyways. But, but the reality is like I'm, I'm, I'm being challenged by the Lord recently just to disconnect a little bit. Just, just to not surround myself with so many of the other voices that seem to be feeding this thing that makes sense. As I bring this to a close today, I don't know if a worship team could help me. Can you guys do that medley you did? Man, it was about to be glorious. It was glorious in here, but it was about to be more glorious. We should have just stayed there. I, I'm serious. I was like, man, I was like, God, give John wisdom. <laughs> that was a hard place, brother. Uh, I do. That's a hard place to be, man. When God's on the verge of just doing something, and it's like, what do I do? And uh, I get it, brother. I get it. I was praying for you. Um, but yeah, man. I I, I just I just want to ask you today: Are you leaning on the wisdom of God? And it's not just because you came to Bible college or you go to church, right? Just because you go to church doesn't mean wisdom is just going to fall in your lap. Sometimes it will. I'll tell you what happened today. Wisdom made itself plain to you through Kathy's words. That was a word from the Lord. That was wisdom that was released to us. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't praying for that. I wasn't believing God for some supernatural wisdom like that to be revealed today. But she said the Holy Spirit wants to use you to bring breakthrough to people's lives. Get a hold of that revelation. That's wisdom. You're trying to fix them. You're trying to help them. You got loved ones you care about. You want to see saved? Stop trying to fix them. Stop trying to preach at them. Start praying in a double portion of the Holy Ghost and see breakthrough come to their life. That's the wisdom of God. That doesn't make sense. I thought I could fix them. I thought if I just shared that one post with them on Facebook, it would work. It ain't worked yet. But the wisdom of God says, pray. Wow. Deep, most deep thing you'll hear all day. Pray. 
So just because we're going to church, just because we're in Bible college, doesn't, doesn't mean necessarily wisdom's going to fall on our lap. Maybe you've been evaluating your choices. Maybe you're realizing, you know what, I'm not making the best choices in my life. And, and this wisdom thing, that might help me out. Listen, please don't feel like you have to fix your choices before you get the wisdom of God. Get the wisdom of God, and it will fix your choices. Right? If you just seek him, listen, it's hard to yell at somebody else when you're praying in tongues. Right? I heard a preacher say that. It's hard to yell at your wife when you're praying in tongues. Right? Right? It's hard to sin when you're praying in tongues, right? It's hard to look at things that are inappropriate on the internet when we're praying in tongues. It's hard to cop an attitude with somebody when you're praying in tongues. Will you guys stand with me? As I sing this song, I'm gonna invite you just kind of as an act of faith to say, you know what? I'm choosing today to to stop trusting so much in my natural ability, and I'm choosing to say, I want to lean on the wisdom of God. And so as they sing this, I want to invite you just to take a step out of your seat, come to this altar, and declare that today's the day that I'm going to start leaning more on the wisdom of God than yesterday.